Next up, we have another Poké martial artist, Hitmonchan. Famed for its lightning fast punches, it's been a fan favorite ever since the first generation. It has also, of course, had a famed film career, ranging from classics like Police Officer Jenny's Story to more contemporary movies like Rush Pokémon 3. Today, we're going to examine if this boxing star of the silver screen has what it takes to cut it in the competitive scene. And so, we ask, how good was Hitmonchan actually? And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. All right, you know the drill by now, but if you don't, unfighting types have it real bad in the first generation, meaning Hitmonchan never had a Hitmon chance. While having stab on the only type that hits normal types super effectively seems great in a metagame dominated by Tauros, Snorlax, and Chansey, but the options for fighting stab are incredibly dire. And what's worse, fighters are completely unable to do anything against the other type that dominates RBY, Psychic. Plus, they lack the resistances to come into attack safely, making them a risk to switch in for the reward of getting walled and accomplishing nothing besides maybe a lucky body slam paralysis. Even the best fighting type, Machamp, isn't very good at all, and Hitmonchan paled in comparison to Machamp. Its only advantage was speed, which wasn't nearly as relevant as its significantly lower attack and its absolutely pathetic bulk. It was downright unusable, and this trend sadly continued into Yu Yu, where psychics like Kadabra and Hypno also reigned supreme. In in addition to other excellent anti-fighting Pokemon like Tentacruel, Haunter, and Dragonite. Thanks to the ancient curse of the fighting type, Hitmonchan just couldn't do anything at all in Gen 1. Like every other Gen 1 Pokemon going into Gen 2, Hitmonchan had its special stat split in two, and gained an excellent special defense of 110. This wouldn't make it a wall or anything, since its HP was still abysmal, but it can now actually take a few special hits decently. Now, in Gen 2, Psychics no longer reigned over every metagame with an Iron Mind, and fighting types became viable as a result, able to threaten the new Steel and Dark types. But sadly, Hitmonchan didn't do anything to stand out from the competition at all. It was the second second weakest of them, and the weakest, Hitmontop, was better than it because it had significantly better physical bulk, allowing it to be a better defensive rapid spinner. Of course, Hitmontop was already not very good at all, even all the way down in NU, because there was no way it, and by extension Hitmonchan, was leaving any sort of impact on OU or UU. Hitmonchan wasn't completely unviable or anything, but there was just next to no reason to use it over the other fighters in NU, as Hitmonlee was decent, and Primeape was one of the best Pokemon in the tier. Think of it like Deoxys Normal, obviously being an amazing Pokemon, but there's no reason to use it over Deoxys Attack or Deoxys Speed 99% of the time, and even that 1% is probably reaching. To summarize, Hitmonchan just had to take its nice new special defense stat and wait for better times. Fortunately, those better times came right away in the next generation. Hitmonchan finally gained legitimate fighting stab in Sky Uppercut, Brick Break, and Focus Punch, as well as coverage in Rock Slide and Earthquake. It could also potentially hold Choice Band to give it a much appreciated power boost. The new effort value system meant that not every Pokemon was completely bulked out either, effectively making Hitmonchan even stronger against many targets. Now, Hitmonchan wasn't going to compete in OU at all, and there was no reason to use it and Yu Yu over Hitmonlee, Primeape, or Hitmontop either, especially since Hitmontop had gained Intimidate. However, down in NU, Hitmonchan was the most dangerous Pokemon in the tier, and arguably the best one overall as well. There were very few answers to its furious fighting type assault, and Hitmonchan was so dominant that the two best answers to it, Chimeco and Sableye, became among the tier's most important Pokemon themselves. Hitmonchan had several sets, all of them excellent. The most immediately dangerous was Choice Band, whose instant power allowed it to threaten out the greatest amount of opposing Pokemon and smash its switch-ins with heavy damage. Even Sableye didn't appreciate such a powerful Earthquake, and Chimeco didn't want to eat Hidden Power Ghost. Of course, the set was somewhat prediction-reliant and could sometimes get worn down quickly by spikes and chip damage, but if that was a concern, Hitmonchan could run several great leftover sets. While its power wasn't as immense as the band set, it still hit quite hard and was in some ways more difficult to deal with thanks to increased longevity and the ability to switch 
moves. It could ensure that it hit its switch in with the right move by scouting with Substitute, which allowed it to unleash incredibly powerful focus punches that denied even the bulkiest Chimeco. If the other team was sufficiently weakened, it could even go for the sweep with a bulk up or agility set. Hitmonchan could even support its team without even compromising its offense by throwing rapid spin onto its moveset. It dominated two of the three spikers, Glalie and Cacturn, while Roselia and its meager defense stat were not eager to switch in and eat an earthquake either. Ghosts weren't a problem either, as Haunter would get dropped by Hidden Power Ghost, while Sableye was crippled by Toxic. Hitmonchan could do it all, and it was a central force in just about every battle it appeared in, which was many of them. It has suffered before, but now it reigned over the NU tier. You love to see it. And while it wasn't going to be breaking into OU anytime soon, Hitmonchan did get some nice boosts from the fourth generation. The new physical special split allowed it new coverage in Ice Punch and Thunder Punch. It received amazing fighting stab in close combat, and it did get an excellent ability in Iron Fist, which powered up its stab priority mock punch as well as the elemental punches. Directly below OU, fighting type competition remained fierce, and despite Hitmonchan being somewhat viable, as DPP UU was famous for, it realistically wasn't going to be a better choice than Blaziken, Toxicroak, and other two Hitmons, so its usage was not going to reflect that of a genuine UU Pokemon. Thus, to NU it went once more, and while it was no longer the tier's top Pokemon, it was still a ferocious threat. While in terms of pure offensive capability, Hitmonchan was outclassed by Metacham, Metacham couldn't hope to match Hitmonchan's support capabilities in Rapid Spin, which was more crucial than ever, since the only other Pokemon in the tier that could do so was the much slower Sand Slash, and being being able to spin away Stealth Rock was enormous for the tier's best Pokemon, Charizard. Unlike Sand Slash, Himonchan was able to pose a threat of its own while being able to spin effectively. Plus, it could partner up with Metacham for a brutal tag team of fearsome fighting ferocity. One of them could be the Life Orb Wall Breaker, and the other could easily clean up with a Choice Scarf. The duel was made even more effective by Skunk Tank's ability to easily pursue the most popular fighting resists, Slow King and Hypno. Overall, Himonchan's ability to combine crucial support with blistering offense made it an excellent choice in NU once again. The fifth generation turned Drain Punch from meager to excellent, and as it was also boosted by Iron Fist, this was a nice buff for Hitmonchan. However, Hitmonchan was not going to be able to use this buff to break into UU, since someone at Game Freak decided to go out of their way to insert a ton of excellent new fighting types. Thus, it ended up in RU, the new tier below UU, and there it was a little out of its depth. It was still an offensive rapid spinner, but that role was primarily filled by the excellent meta-defining Kabu tops who could smash through every ghost type with ease, something Hitmonchan couldn't do. Offensively, Hitmonchan was fairly dangerous, but it wasn't anything special. It had stiff competition as it was almost entirely outdone by Metacham, Gallade, Girder, and its cousin Hitmonlee, as all of them were getting more usage because they were almost always just better. Rapid Spin kept Hitmonchan in RU, but it was really quite niche, especially as Cryogonal was another excellent option that could also go offensive and was thus preferred for most teams. Thus, Hitmonchan was just about never used in serious play. It was probably more of an NU Pokemon, where it would have been a major threat, and its spin would have been highly appreciated to facilitate Charizard just like in the previous generation. Alas, the folly of the tearing rung is as strange as it is spiteful. Hitmonchan hated Generation 6's addition of Fairy types, but loved the addition of Assault Vest. The special defense boost expanded the scope of Hitmonchan's offensive and defensive capabilities, allowing it to trade blows with more Pokemon, especially thanks to the Iron Fist boosted Drain Punch, keeping it healthy, and being able to pull off Rapid Spin more easily as a result of its increased hit-taking ability. Now, its spin wasn't usually considered an essential part of a team since the fog was also fairly widespread, and Hitmonchan's spin could be relied upon more if one went to the trouble of adding pursuit support, since Hitmonchan was fairly helpless against the tier's ghost types like Gorgeist XL, Miss Magius, and Rotom. Pursuit also happened to help against bulky psychics that walled Hitmonchan like Masharna and Mesperit, so it was a solid pairing. Anyways, as far as luxuries go, it was one of the better ones and was especially nice for easing pressure off its team's primary hazard control option in its chosen Defogger. However, Hitmonchan's main use was its ability to threaten many of the tier's best Pokemon with its stab, as being able to 
to smash through defensive staples like Steelix, Rhydon, and Ferroseed was terrific, and even faster Pokemon like Pyroar, Shiftry, Coppertops, and Boosted Barbaracle were taken care of thanks to Priority Mach Punch. It was able to threaten many of the tier's common fighting resists thanks to its powerful Iron Fisted Boosted Ice Punches, slamming Vileplume and Zatu in particular. It wasn't perfect since it also had other solid, non pursuitable counters in Clefairy, Garbodor, and Weezing, as Hitmonchan's lack of knockoff really hurt it, but despite its flaws, it had a nice niche within the NU metagame once again, with its effective blend of anti-metagame offensive presence and the rapid spin support capability. While Hitmonchan at first glance has a nice bag of tricks under its sleeve for VGC, as it has Fake Out, two boosted priority moves in Mach Punch and Bullet Punch, and Elemental Coverage, the simple fact is that it's almost entirely outclassed by its sibling, Hitmontop, who brings the ever-valuable Intimidate to the ring. Since the two are always available at the same time, bringing Hitmonchan to a VGC match meant it was punching significantly above its weight class. While Hitmonchan certainly could deliver some haymakers with its Iron Fist boosted priority, the extra power Hitmonchan brings wasn't worth the trade-off when compared to Hitmontop's utility, which also included Wide Guard and Quick Guard, as well as its better bulk. The two are so similar that it was pretty much unheard of to include Hitmonchan on your team, as the one successful bout it had was in 2015 on the team of Guido Marino, who did manage to put up a respectable top 4 finish with it at the Italian Regionals on a team consisting of Cresselia, Mega Gardevoir, Amoongus, Gastrodon, and Heatran. Z-move power creep resulted in Hitmonchan being knocked down below NU, landing in PU. It wasn't much of a Z-abuser itself, but it was still quite a good Pokemon. Assault Vest sets were effective performers, but the main set that emerged was one that focused less on pure damage dealing and more on maximizing its defensive capabilities so it could support with Rapid Spin. Since it matched up so well against the common Stealth Rock setters one-on-one, -on -one, especially the quadruple fighting weak Alolan Sandslash, as well as Aggron and Regirock, Hitmonchan gained the new method of offsetting its lack of reliable recovery, augmenting Drain Punch with the excellent new Pinch HP Restoring Berries, effectively giving it a second life and allowing it to consistently keep rocks off without being crippled by a few hits. It wasn't thwarted by the spin blockers Jellicent, Frostlass, Oracorial G, Spiritomb, Sableye, and Golurk since Hitmonchan crippled them with Toxic and had little trouble staying healthy thanks to the recovery-focused nature of its set. The Drain Punch and Aya Papa Berry combination was especially effective alongside Toxic since Toxic wasn't just an anti-ghost move. It meant Hitmonchan could focus on staying healthy while the opposing Pokemon lost health, which was great at continuing to deal damage to the opponent while they might try to take shots at Hitmonchan as it used spin. Notably useful against common physical defensive walls, Mudsdale and Tangela. As the set aimed to stick around, Hitmonchan appropriately EV'd in bulk. This allowed it to switch in against a wide variety of special attacking Pokemon to get its spin off, most notably bulkier Pokemon like Electros and Cryogonal, but even powerful attackers like Simiseer and Scarf Aurorus. However, despite the lack of attack investment, its Iron Fist boosted Mach Punch was still an effective revenge killer against many of the tier's fighting weak threats, most notably Lycanroc, Kangaskhan, Kabutops, Stoutland, and Amistar. Hibonchan's spinning was well appreciated by the many Stealth Rock weak offensive Pokemon such as Scyther, Aurorus, and the Oricorio forms. Plus, being able to remove the opponent's hazards while maintaining its team's own was a luxury, not often afforded in the Age of the Fog, and was especially potent alongside Spike support. Overall, PU hit Hitmonchan was an excellent Pokemon, embracing a new style of play and becoming better for it. Generation 8 NU is not yet fully developed at the time of this video, but Hitmonchan tentatively looks to be making a return to the tier. It has buffed coverage and throat chop, and its rapid spinning abilities are made significantly better by the new heavy duty boots, providing it hazard immunity. So time will tell how things will go for the old Palooka. And that's it, so how good was Hitmonchan actually? Well, it was always overshadowed by other fighting types, especially its stronger cousin Hitmonlee. But after the rough start that all early gen fighters are cursed with, it had a solid career for itself, mixing offensive prowess and rapid spin support. It's even been the best Pokemon in a tier when it reigned over advanced NU. So overall, Hitmonchan hasn't been the flashiest or the best Pokemon, but when all said and done, it's been relatively pretty good. Thanks for watching everyone, and as always, if you like the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False White Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content. And in the comments, I want to know what do you think about competitive Hitmonchan? How would you buff it to make it at least UU or even OU? What would you give it over Hitmontop? Whatever it is, let me know in the comments. Also, thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos. And thank you to everyone else watching as well.
and follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.